Hi, I'm Casper and I'm still getting paid to run this YouTube channel. In the last video that I have created, you might have seen me work with this thing, and to be honest, not much has changed since then. But there's an obvious addition of a camera on top of this turret, which makes it much easier to point out my coworkers. However, it's not the only thing that has changed. I've also thought it a little bit about human recognition, so it can track humans now. And I want you to understand that it's not really good right now, because it lags behind the target quite severely. And it's not bad because I had no idea how to implement it, it's bad because I was too lazy to implement a proper PID control. I want to talk a little bit more about the changes that I have made to this project, and I'm going to start with the mechanical point of view because there's not much that has changed in fact. The only part that I had to design in order to attach the foam on top of the barrel is this black bracket that you can see. The grey parts are designed by a guy from Thingiverse with a name that I can't pronounce. The link's in the description if you want to check it out. At first I wanted to use a USB camera, which is both lighter and smaller, however I've decided against it because there's not really enough space to run the wires between the turret sides and the blaster. This problem could be fixed by redesigning a few parts, which is already needed because the side-to-side -side stiffness of this turret is not really great. However, I've decided not to do it because I prefer to implement as many features as humanly possible and then fix the problems that have arised along the way all at once. The last thing that I have changed is I have moved the whole gun a little bit to the back and it's mostly because the phone I'm using is pretty heavy and puts a lot of strains on the motors. So in order to lessen the strain I had to rebalance the whole thing. There have been some bigger changes made to the software part of this project. Before basically everything has been computed by the onboard Raspberry Pi, mostly because there wasn't much to compute at all. In fact all it was doing was moving the wheels or moving the turret according to the joy input. When it comes to the wheels, there's a little bit of math needed to control it in the mechanism drive mode, and that's basically it. For the turret, all it needs to be doing is forcing the dynamic cells to move with a speed proportionate to the joy position, plus a little bit of corner cases, so it's not going to hit itself or cut the wires. The Raspberry Pi that's inside the rover is well over enough to be used here. The use of additional camera changes things a bit. Image data is huge and scales really fast with the resolution. I could still use the onboard Raspberry Pi to show the unprocessed view from the second camera. However, I wanted to implement human tracking and Raspberry Pi just isn't built for image processing and that's where my old laptop steps in. I'm using the phone as a Wi-Fi camera. Thanks to an app called Erin Camera, my laptop thinks it's a USB webcam, which is nice as this allows me to use OpenCV to extract camera frames without any problems. With just a few additional lines, I can add a crosser on top of it. My first idea was to do something simple. During one of the courses of OpenCV that I found on the internet, I've learned about color detection. I knew it's not going to work for detecting humans because it's really hard to define a human by a single color. However, I decided to just try. What I've learned is that any changes in the lighting conditions are going to drastically change what the camera sees. The second technology that I have found that can be used for detecting humans from the background is called cascade classifiers. It works well, it's super fast, but does not really work well with human poses. That's why if I'm going to do something different than stand still, it's going to not think that I'm a human. The bigger problem, however, is the second one, that it does not really work well with a lot of clutter in the background. I don't want to make my target stand in front of a white wall all the time, so that's a definite no-go. The biggest problem of all is, however, the last one, that it gives a huge amount of false positives. Well, not right now, not with this classifier, but I'm going to show you another one that works much worse. This is the classifier I want to show you. I'm not even on screen and it already thinks that I'm smiling. This classifier basically gives me the most false positives out of all that I have ever tested. It works well, I mean, it knows that I'm smiling, at least when I'm smiling, but it also thinks that everything else is smiling at the same time, so not usable for my case. Out of all the classifiers that come built in with OpenCV, I think that this one is the one that works the best. I mean, it should be showing only my left eye and it's showing both most of the time. The only problem with it is that if I'm far away, it's not going to work. Histogram of Oriented Gradients, or HOG as it's called for short, is the next technology that I have tried. It works really, really well because as you can see, the box basically never disappears. Also, if I'm going to move around, it's not going to care either about the clutter or the really strong light. The first problem that I can think about is that it's really, really slow and makes my laptop sound like a helicopter. That's also why I'm standing so far away from it right now in order to make sure that microphone is not going to pick up the sound. But it's also not the only reason why. The bigger problem with it is that it tends to be taught on a very specific data. As you can see right now, I am a human. If I'm going to move closer, however, 
I am no longer one. There's also one more thing that I don't like about this classifier, and it's that it was taught on some very specific data. Basically, the post that I've got right now looks human for it, but if I'm going to do this, I'm no longer human. I have spent a lot of time looking for better solutions, but finally I found MediaPipe made by Google. I decided to look into the documentation and what I found is post recognition. So I clicked on it and seen that it's going to be pretty useful for what I'm trying to do, as long as it's going to be fast. So using the tutorial that they provide on the bottom of the site, right here, I decided to just try and use it. As you can see, the software makes me nice and skeletonized. Also shows a lot of markers all over my body. That's why my face looks like a bad Christmas tree. The amount of markers is huge and this gives me a lot of possibilities for choosing any kind of point for the turret to follow. I've decided to just use the one on the tip of my nose and you can probably see the pinkish lines follow my nose when I'm moving all around the screen. I'm using the length of the lines basically the same way I would be using the analog stick position when using a joystick. If the line is long and to the left, this means that the turret needs to be moving to the left with a pretty substantial speed. If it's closer to the center and to the right, the turret is going to move slowly to the right. Basically, the position of my nose on the screen correlates to the speed and direction the turret is going to move. The moment I press this button, the turret is going to go from manual steering mode into the automatic mode. And as you can see, it's going to be following my face, just not really well. It's lagging behind quite badly, but that's something I can fix in the future. All I need to do is basically implement some proper PID control. I want to show you, however, something else that's extremely cool about the software. And it's mostly that it does not care at all about how I look right now. If I'm going to go here, Half of my body is hidden behind the table and it's still working. Yes, sometimes it's going to freak out and not know what to do. However, most of the time it works extremely well. And it's also really, really fast. As of right now, it's running at 27 point something FPS and it's really, really good. I really wanted to shoot someone with it for the end of this video. However, I'm sitting alone in an empty office, so this means that I am the only possible target and I'm not looking forward to it. That's why I'm going to just do a few preparations before I get myself shot. I need to do just two things. First is eye protection because I'm not willing to lose sight for my bad creation. And the second thing is to just remove those two. It takes ages to get them clean, but that's basically it. And also this thing does not shoot on itself so I need to be the one shooting it, which makes it even more scary, I think. Still, you gotta do what you gotta do. Fucking scary bastard. Still, that should be it for the video and probably it for me. So goodbye and see you next time. Carry. You can also see how much it lags. Future Casper here. I want to make one thing clear. I need to be the one pulling the trigger because this thing cannot do it on its own. It's a safety feature, I'd say. It's going to be changed in the future. Whew, that's the end of the balls, I guess. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ow.